All right, guys, here's my beautiful nursery. Here's the not-so-beautiful landscape median for the city of Richmond. Cool thing is, look, they actually got their weed eaters out. I'll zoom in. And they kind of trimmed that one back a little bit. They haven't made it over here yet. But it looks like they did pick up the garbage because usually there's a lot more garbage here. Uh, but it's a pretty big contrast from here to that beautiful paradise over there. So I try to lessen that um, contrast. And the way I'm doing it here in this median is I'm planting one of my favorite trees. Gorilla gardening style. Gorilla, like a, like not like a gorilla, a guerrilla. You know what guerrilla is? You know what guerra is? If you know what Spanish is, you know how to speak Spanish. You know that guerra is war. Guerrilla is uh, like a warrior, like guerrilla warfare. You kind of do it incognito. You know, you kind of do what you're not supposed to be doing. I'm probably technically not supposed to be planting this tree out here, but I did anyway. And uh, because I want it to look beautiful. This is ficus macrophylla. Uh, some people may have followed up on this. I planted it as a little seedling. We watered it for the first two years. We don't water it all anymore. And it's doing great despite all the dust and everything. There's a metal recycling plant right there. That's a huge pile of recycled metal behind those trees. And they have this like rusty uh, dust that comes out here, lands on all the plants and suffocates them. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. Yet yeah, this tree is totally fine with it. Uh, we noticed that a lot of our trees, like on this part of the nursery, don't do as well as the ones further away from the metal recycling plant. Whatever. I'm not going to bitch them out. They were here first. That's the way it should be. So, anyway, uh, back on point, ficus macrophylla, the Morton Bay fig tree from uh, Morton Bay area of northeast, uh, I believe, Queensland, Australia. It gets these giant tropical leaves. Uh, it's totally lush looking. This is the Robinson Caruso tree that you'll see emulated. Uh, in a fake version at uh, Disneyland, and it's surrounded for the big where the big tree house is, and uh, also there are a bunch of live trees. They don't the live trees don't support the greenhouse the uh, tree house. The fake trees that look like this do, but uh, this tree's going to get really huge. It's the largest spreading tree in North America, unsupported tree down in Santa Barbara train station. It's got to be 180 feet across. That is very far. So eventually there'll be this big big tunnel. This will be the entrance to Point Richmond here coming through the tunnel of my ficus macrophylla when I'm really old, uh, but still happy because my tree is thriving. So what do I need to do to keep the tree thriving? Well, like I said, we don't water it anymore. It's on its own, so it's, it's good in that regard. But I don't want it to branch too low. I don't want these branches down here. This particular tree, another thing that's cool about this tree, you know who Michael Crichton is? Michael Crichton is the guy who wrote the original book, Jurassic Park, and a bunch of other cool books, sci-fi books. And he lived uh, in Santa Monica on this road where the city crews a long time ago thought they were planting magnolia trees, which this one resembles. Instead, they mistakenly planted a bunch of ficus macrophylla, and they got huge. And uh, so my buddy, a friend of mine, is a big Michael Crichton fan. He, uh, he I, could, I, could, I could tell you who he is, but he doesn't want me to. He's a really famous guy, <laughs> so I won't say who he is. Uh, and uh, he, he'll watch this video. I think that's what it is. Anyway, uh, he went to Michael Crichton's house. Michael Crichton didn't live there anymore and collected the seed off the tree right in front of Michael Crichton's house. This tree actually appeared in Jurassic Park, the movie, where the eggs were nestled in the roots on the island of Kauai, where they filmed it. Um, so this tree is a direct descendant of Michael Crichton's tree, first, uh, second generation, I guess. Uh, so anyway, here we go. What I want to do here... So I want to I want to branch really high. I don't want any of this stuff down here. So I'm going to trim this off, get rid of all this. I want a big stalk, and uh, it's going to look really good. It's going to be the coolest tree in the whole city. Hopefully they don't cut it down because like you weren't supposed to do it. But it's the coolest tree in the city. That doesn't matter. You weren't supposed to do it. I'm like, oh my god, government, Gobierno, Gobierno. You know what I mean? Uh, all right, I want this one gone right here. I'll go the air and I'll... All right, now here you see it's branched kind of nicely, but I kind of want to branch higher, so I'm going to sacrifice these. The more of these I cut off, the more energy will go to the rest of the plant that I want to retain and encourage. And I think I'm going to get really aggressive here and just keep going. No reason to cut off this leaf, it's making energy, and it's part of the main stem. But I do want to get rid of this part here, nice and clean, like just so. Uh, right here, without cutting the leaf off. Come on, baby. 
right there. Come out here once a year and do this. And I got one more here. I think I'm gonna let the rest of it go. There, now it's gonna branch even higher, see that? And I may not want these. I may want it to get really tall and then, then branch. But I'm gonna let those go because we need some leaves on it to uh, create the energy, the sleeve. No reason for that one there. You see it exudes a little sap too. Rubber tree, because you, you can turn that into rubber um, if you need some rubbers or rubber or whatever. Uh, so there you go. That's the, uh, that's what we're doing today. And wish me luck. And it's been about a three year process so far. It's taller than me now. And I'm not shrinking. Well, I am, but I've actually shrunk a half inch in my lifetime. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I used to be six foot and a half. Now I'm six foot. My kid illuminated that to me. I'm like, no, we measured myself and it was true. But maybe if I wake up in the morning and do my stretches, I'll, I'll be taller. But yeah, there it is. It's probably about six foot six. And uh, that's my ficus tree. And I'm a, that's my whole story. And I'm sticking to it. And hopefully this thing will thrive and take off and be huge someday.